Let's take a brief look at two more examples. Um, here again, we've got a piecewise defined function. Right? So f of x is equal to the square of x minus 1, as long as x is not equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, we just assign it the value of 1. Um, now, this is a piecewise defined function. Um, and, and we could look at this using one-sided limits. Um, but it's maybe more work than we need to do, because you can see that um, if we're looking at the limits as x approaches 1 from either the left or from the right, well, we're going to use this expression in both cases, right? It applies as long as x isn't equal to 1, right? And so, so the left-hand limit is the same as the right-hand limit. Um, without doing any work, we can see that, because we know we're going to use the same expression. So in this case, we can actually just jump straight to the overall limit, right? And say, well, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, right? And remember that in the definition of the limit, we're allowing x to be close to 1, but we don't actually allow x to equal 1, right? And since we're not actually allowing x to be equal to 1, that means we should use the top expression for f of x. And of course, now we can do direct substitution. We plug in x equals 1, and we get 0. Um, on the other hand, we can see by definition that f of 1 is equal to 1. It's not 0. So if we were seeing this sort of problem in the context of, of continuity, which, as I mentioned, is coming up soon, then our function would not be continuous because these values don't agree. However, as far as the limit is concerned, right, the limit doesn't actually care about what happens when x equals 1. Right? That's irrelevant to the limit. Right? The value of the function at a single point is irrelevant for limits. Right? Limits only care about what's going on near a point, and we can use standard limit techniques to figure that one out. OK. Here's one more, absolute value function. Okay. Uh, a lot of people will get mixed up by, by something like this because they don't handle the absolute value function correctly. Right? Uh, a lot of people, you know, they get stuck on the original absolute value, which says, well, OK, um, you know, we use one thing if x is bigger than 0. We use another thing if x is less than 0, right? But that's for absolute value of x. If you have something else inside, um, then that we're looking at whether this whole thing inside the absolute value is bigger than 0 or smaller than 0, uh, right? So in other words, we care about whether x is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1, OK? All right? One way to think about this is what this is doing is it's measuring the distance between x and 1. Okay? So if we wanted to, we can actually rewrite this as a piecewise defined function. Okay? It's going to be minus x minus 1 over x plus 1 if x is less than 1. Right? Because if x is less than 1, x minus 1 will be negative. And remember that if you put something negative into an absolute value, it puts a minus sign out front to switch the sign back to positive. Okay. If x is bigger than 1, the expression is already positive, so the absolute value doesn't have to do anything. We leave it as x minus 1. Okay. And that's valid if x is bigger than 1. Um, and if x is equal to 1, we get 0 either way. You can, you can put the equals whichever one you want. Let's put it down there. Okay. So now that we've written this as a piecewise defined function, we can calculate one-sided limits. So we can say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of minus x minus 1 over x plus 1. And of course, when we plug in x equal to 1, we get 0. And with a bit of work, you can see that the same is going to be true for, for the right-hand limit. Um, if you want to make this example a little bit more interesting, we change this up. Okay? If you change this plus into a minus, okay, so we have x minus 1 over x minus 1, right? then, then this becomes x minus 1, x minus 1. right? But then this whole thing would just be minus 1. This whole thing would just be plus 1, right? And in that case, 
If you're approaching one from the left, your limit is going to be minus one. If you're approaching one from the right, your limit is going to be plus one. Okay? Uh, so the moral of the story is that if, if you're handed something with absolute values in it, you sometimes need to be a little bit careful because absolute value functions are piecewise defined functions, right? And when in doubt, if you're dealing with a piecewise defined function, you should use one-sided limits.